So this past week we've had Microsoft's annual developer conference build. So first up we look at the integration between GPT and Bing. As we're aware, we can now search the web with GPT because it's integrated with Bing, but it now has the ability to handle plugins, which if you don't know what they are, it can do things such as create shopping carts for you, it can find houses in specific areas using these different plugins. Watch this. And I can ask for a set of criteria, learn a little bit about the neighborhoods. Uh, and now I can automatically call Zillow by saying, hey, give me three houses in a certain price range that meet my criteria. And now I can call Bing Chat and ask it to tell me, hey, give me the ingredients from this web page. And notice Bing can read the context of the web page, understand those ingredients, put them into chat. And then I can say, hey, give me a shopping list for this. And it'll automatically call the Instacart plugin take those ingredients that right off the page and put them into an Instacart shopping. And with one click, I can get those now delivered to my house. And you know, it's one of these weird points for me, this, because one is really efficient, like for instance, the recipe, but I can't help but feel like I'm just getting rid of all my admin tasks and then I don't know what to do with myself. Um, but luckily Microsoft have a solution. We can play video games. And now with searching the web as well, when it gives you back results, brings back results with citations, which is pretty cool. They then talk about Copilot. Before we jump in, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. But I also covered Google I.O., which is Google's developer conference. That will be linked below, card here, if you want to check that out. Copilot being essentially your AI assistant. It helps you write articles, write code, explain the code, explain concepts. It's basically like having an assistant at all times that knows everything on the internet. And again, with Copilot, they talk about plugins. The example they give here is with Law. You can download a specific plugin and you can use this plugin to then cite parts of Law. And... But it is strange here because if they're going to be using Law as the example, then they're implying that the advice they give is going to be perfectly legal and perfectly right. And so it would make you wonder if it's a plugin, does that mean Microsoft are doing that amazing neo dodging where plugin providers are actually bearing the responsibility of providing the information as opposed to Microsoft themselves. And then also is this going to be extrapolated into being the first step in creating like AI judges, which I don't really know if it is something we're going to want, because if you've seen some of the laws, for instance, where I'm from in the UK, I don't know if we want a logical sequencing to see if you did something illegal or not. But if you're into the code inside it, something which is cool is the ability for Copilot to generate code. That's pretty cool, but it can also rename variables and add comments to better explain the code. Next up, we talk about Azure AI, and I'll just run the video for you. AI Studio. This is the full life cycle tool chain for you to be able to build your intelligent AI apps uh, and your co-pilots. Everything from being able to train your own models uh, to be able to then ground, whether it's open AI or any open source model, uh, and of course, built-in support for perhaps the most important feature, which is AI safety. And though it's cool, they have principles, compliance and stuff all built in, right? Which is something that people are worried about with data. So don't worry, Microsoft will have all your data, but you won't be able to use other people's data incorrectly. So don't worry about it. And from here, you can build AI apps and co-pilot. So you can create a co-pilot that's specific to your company, so it can answer questions to the customer, for instance, or specific for your apps to help you. And if that's not all, they also have an AI model catalog, so they'll have like pre-made AI models, which you can then use in your own work. Final thing we'll touch on is Microsoft Fabric, which at first, I had no idea what he was talking about. He was doing that standard fluffy thing of like stacks and suites and experiences and value. A unified data analytics platform. One product, one experience, one architecture, one business model. But then I did more listening, so you don't have to. You can just listen to me instead of listening to them and I'll listen to them and then you just listen to me. Basically, what it does is it unifies their entire analytics platform. So without getting into too much detail, databases, for instance, you get different types of databases and they're siloed in their own thing. You can imagine it like it's different bags, different boxes, whatever. And then you get a dashboard, which is a place to see this data and to interact with it. Well, now they've created an AI-based suite, which facilitates using this data and this dashboard all together. So instead of having one and one and one and one and one and one, you can have all of these on one dashboard and you can use AI to, to get results from that. So pretty cool. 